Power, pot, and playoffs. That's a pretty juicy headline for how the NFL CBA proposal would impact your Dallas Cowboys. Mike Fisher reporting from Frisco. This is not a done deal yet, but let's talk about what we know and how it might apply to your Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I'll go back for the last couple of years, especially in the wake of the mishandling of the Ezekiel Elliott case. And I mean mishandling from Commissioner Roger Goodell uh, all the way up and all the way down. And I've called for the NFLPA, especially after that incident, but, but before that too, to replace what it's using, what it's been using for brains, muscles, and balls, which has been raisins, raisins, and more raisins, with some real brains, some real muscle, some real brass ones, and attempt for the first time in NFL history to actually win a collective bargaining agreement negotiation with the league. NFL owners, uh, as we sit here today, have created a new CBA proposal. Players now, players' representatives first get to vote on it. Two-thirds of that gets a thumbs up. Then it goes to uh, the union members at large. There's three areas where uh, the Cowboys are impacted here. Three areas that jump out for me, just in terms of my personal interest in the NFL, the CBA, and the union. Those three areas are the abolishment of the insidious Article 46. I went back and uh, Googled and then looked on Twitter at Fish Sports and Article 46. And I did indeed mention it a trillion times to the point where some of you got a little tired of it. Then Ezekiel Elliott got suspended for six games. And then you understood how, how important it is and how ridiculous it is that the NFL commissioner gets to do whatever he wants to whomever he wants, whenever he wants. Uh, to the point where, and I mean this in a very literal sense, if the commissioner decided he didn't like your hair, he could suspend you. The rules say he can. Now, you can fight it and lose the way everybody almost always loses in court to the NFL because Article 46 is all-encompassing. It's a gigantic umbrella that allows the commissioner ultimate power to say, no, for the good of the game, I don't like blonde hair. Literally, he could. Uh, and, and if you think he never would, well, of course, he'd never do that. But he did do Ezekiel Elliott, giving him a six-game suspension when Elliott had not been uh, found guilty uh, by any legal level uh, or of any legal level crimes. And yet other people who had committed the same crime had admitted to it uh, and had the police saying so, the government saying so, got one game or 10 games, or zero games. Um, Ezekiel Elliott has tied to his 2017 suspension a letter that, as I said then and still say, he should laminate that thing and carry it around in his pocket to remind him, and I'll paraphrase, any legal interaction with law enforcement officials can result in a lifetime ban from the NFL. You remember after that, Zeke got handcuffed uh, in Las Vegas. That was negative interaction with law enforcement officials. He could have, by Article 46 NFL law, been suspended for life. By the way, he could also, and this goes for any player, I'm defending Ezekiel Elliott or defending the Cowboys, any player could get accused of any crime right now. And under Article 46, the commissioners say, wow, uh, some some guy in Cleveland says that I don't know, you know, offensive coordinator of the New York Giants, Jason Garrett, punched him. I could suspend Jason Garrett for anything at any time. And again, this especially uh, goes for players. Maybe I shouldn't use Garrett as the example. First of all, I don't think he's punching anybody. And then second of all, now that I think about it, I don't know that articles, I don't know what the commissioner would do with coaches. I was trying to think of a Cleveland player. Baker Mayfield gets accused of spitting on somebody. And that accusation could result in the end of Baker Mayfield's career, in a literal sense. The abolishment of the insidious Article 46, let's do that first. As it stands presently, any player who engages in, quote, uh, conduct detrimental to the integrity of or public confidence in the game. Under the new CBA, nope. The commissioner is stripped of that power. And it now goes to an independent arbitrator. Now, 
I don't know what that means. Excuse my uh, finger here. Watch out. There we go. Uh, I don't know what that means, a neutral arbitrator. Who picks the neutral arbitrator? As long as it's not Roger Goodell, and frankly, in fairness, as long as it's not just the Players Association, this is a gigantic step forward from getting these players out of the NFL's present kangaroo court. Item number two, the decriminalization of pot. I've called for this for years. Le'Veon Bell, to me, is the sample case. Uh, I'm exaggerating only a little bit when it seems like the Steelers had to suspend and the NFL had to suspend Le'Veon Bell for the first four games every year. He smoked pot in the offseason. So the Steelers would start out behind the eight ball because Le'Veon Bell was suspended for four games. How's that good for football? How's that good for business? It's, it's obviously bad for Le'Veon Bell, but it's also bad for the owners. Uh, Jerry Jones finally helped ownership realize, uh, fellas, we're costing ourselves money by telling the player who smokes pot that he can't smoke pot. Uh, I've seen some people, here's the cowboy tie, besides Jerry's pushing for this. I've seen some people say that Jerry's pro-pot, quote, pro-pot because of Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory would be the first to tell you and had told me. He's got, he's got issues that go beyond uh, his use of marijuana as a medical, psychological coping tool. So it's misleading to suggest that Randy Gregory is going to suddenly get 10 sacks next year because of this change in the CBA. But it is a step to realizing that suspending players for marijuana is bad business. And I think it's a tiny step towards maybe just maybe, and by the way, I'm not a marijuana expert by any stretch. I don't know anything about anything and I'm scared of aspirin. But the next big step here would be a subtle shift from the decriminalization, which is what they've done. For the testing window used to be four months, now it's two weeks, right before training camp, I believe. And even if a guy tests positive for THC, marijuana, can't be suspended. He just gets fined. It's a big difference and it's positive. Next positive step, have the league recognize that that accepting THC might help players medically and psych psychologically. It might be a benefit. And item number three, real money as befitting a partnership. The NFL average salary is $900,000. It's non-guaranteed. The NBA's average salary is $8 million fully guaranteed. <laughs> And NBA players make 10 times what NFL players make. Uh, given the fact that NFL players are literally putting their lives at risk when they play, this is outrageous. So here comes some changes uh, in the proposal, tied, of course, to the 17-game regular season, tied, of course, to the more playoff games. You get minimum salaries bumped up. Uh, if you if, uh, Minimum previously for a rookie was 510. Now it'll be $600,000. Medical care bumped up cap exceptions to pay more salary and added benefits for practice squatters too. Some of the previous medical stuff didn't make any sense. The players union previously had not negotiated for in the, in the insurance policy, the medical insurance policy for vision coverage. Everybody has vision coverage. It's, it cost me like a dollar for my entire family to have vision coverage. The NFL players didn't have it. Uh, they, they can now, uh, if you earned a buy, so you're the best team in the conference, you played one less game, but you're the best team, you got penalized financially for not playing in the bye week. You didn't get a game check. You didn't get a playoff game check because you didn't play a game. Come on, NFLPA. <laughs> How did you fall for that? Well, now we're going to fix that, and the owners are volunteering to fix that. Um, some of the new ideas don't seem like enough. The 17th week, if, if that goes into play, the salary for that week is capped at a quarter of a million dollars, which is a lot of money, $250,000. But if you make more than that in your weekly check, sorry, you, you don't get another weekly check of your normal size. You get that. That doesn't seem quite right. Then I'll go to the 50-50. The NBA revenue share is 50-50. And you know why? Because the owners are smart enough to tell the players, you are our partners. As our partners, we're going to split the revenue share 50-50 in addition to everything else you get. That's a partnership. In the NFL, they have inched towards, we will move from 47% to 48.5 uh, if you give us uh, the, the 17 games and the rest. Now, 48.5% revenue share is like $5 billion. It's a considerable amount of money. But shouldn't the players say, no, we'll take 50, please. We're, we're partners in this. Uh, the playoff deal 
the, the additional playoff thing, finally, how it affects the Cowboys. And this is wrapped into the money, too. It's pot, it's power, and it's playoffs. We get one more team in each conference. So the seventh best team in the NFC gets to go. Great. How does being the seventh best team in the NFC affect the Dallas Cowboys historically? Surprisingly, I think, and sadly, not at all, given that in the last 10 years, had there been a number seven seed in the NFC, Dallas would not have been helped one bit. Dallas would not have played even one more postseason game had there been a seventh seed. So Cowboy ties, yes. Cowboy benefits, not in some ways. Players benefits, we have inched towards the right direction, waiting now for ratification from the players' representatives. Two-thirds of them have to vote yes, and then it goes to the body. If this doesn't happen, the NFL's owners are making noise, saying, ah, then fine, we'll sit on it, in which case we may have labor strife uh, going forward after this uh, exp expiration of the 2020 CBA. But this is a positive step forward. Uh, there's no question about that. Some concessions are made here in what I think are three big areas, pot and power and playoffs. Fish out.